Welcome to a new edition of the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino. On this episode, we talk with communication coach and YouTuber, Brendan Kumarasamy. He is the founder of Master Talk. He coaches ambitious executives and entrepreneurs to become top 1% communicators in their industry. He also has a popular YouTube channel called Master Talk with the goal of providing free access to communication tools for everyone in the world. This is a cool cat. Enjoy this interview. Well, hey, man, it's nice to meet you. Thanks for taking some time out today. Joe, the pleasure is absolutely mine. Thanks so much for having me. My pleasure, man. Before we get into it, talk to me about how you survived COVID and how that process, that time, changed you. (laughs) Yeah, COVID was definitely an interesting time for me. I remember I woke up one day and I had all of these corporate speaking engagements, a thriving business. And the next day I woke up and everything went to zero pretty quickly. And I had to figure out a way to, to adjust. But, you know, for me, Joe, the perspective has always been see everything like a gift. And and for me, in many ways, COVID was a gift because it gave me the confidence to quit my corporate job and go all in on my dreams. That's the silver lining, and I hear a lot about that. So speaking of your your dream job, let's say you're in front of a bunch of third graders at career day right now. One of them looks up and says, what do you do for a living, and how are you qualified to do it? How would you answer them? Yeah, absolutely, Joe. I would say for me, what I would say is I'm a communication coach and a YouTuber who makes videos on public speaking and communication with the goal of helping the world master the art of communication, but focus more on the career. I coach a lot of executives and CEOs on how to do that. And the, the why I'm qualified for it, I think I've made every mistake in the book. So there isn't a mistake I haven't seen yet because I've made every single one. So, so that's where the expertise mostly comes from. So one of the most heart-pounding, stressful things in the world is to do public speaking, and you've chosen this as your area of expertise and your vocation. Take me back in your life and talk to me about how this became your central focus and your passion. Absolutely, Joe. So it all started when I was in college and business school. I did these things called case competitions. Think of it like professional sports, but for nerds. So while other guys my age were playing rugby or soccer or football, I wasn't one of those guys. I did presentations competitively, and that's how I learned how to speak. But then as I grew up, Joe, I started coaching a lot of the students in university on how to communicate so that they could win these competitions too. And that accidentally made me really good at communication coaching. So a few months uh, right after I graduated college, I had the idea for Master Talk because I realized that everything I was coaching the students on wasn't available for free on the internet. So I started making videos, and then a few years later, Master Talk turned into something I never imagined. When you were a kid, what did you dream that you would become when you grew up? You'd be surprised to hear that, Joe, but I actually dreamed of becoming an accountant. And I know that sounds really weird, but the reason is because I didn't grow up with a lot of money. and My parents were factory workers. So I never saw being a business owner as my way out. So when I was 12 years old, similar to your third grader question, when I was in sixth sixth grade, a career counselor asked all of us, hey, you guys got to figure out what you want to do in life. And obviously any other 12-year-old wouldn't care about that. But I didn't have a lot of money, and my parents were struggling. So I needed to figure it out. So I went back home. I opened my very old computer, and I started typing away at different career opportunities. And I realized something really quick, Joe. I was good at math, and I was terrible at everything else. So the choice became really obvious that I should be an accountant, and that's what I chose when I was 12. (laughs) That's great. So who have been role models for you? Who's been a hero in your life? I would say besides my mother, who's probably my my biggest role model, somebody that people can study that would be more helpful is Scott Harrison, who's the CEO of of the nonprofit Charity Water. It's a nonprofit he started to help the world gain access to clean drinking water. And the reason why Scott Harrison is my one of my greatest heroes is because he against all odds helped over 15 million people in the world gain access to clean water and he went from being a nightclub promoter in new york city to doing that and growing that charity to the largest one there's a great quote as well i'd love to share from his book thirst which is the goal is not to live forever but rather create something that will and it was that book and his lessons that really made me shift my focus from trying to be an executive to trying to change the world you may have already answered this question but i'm going to ask it if you could meet anybody alive on the planet today and talk to him who would it be i would actually meet peter Thiel. 
because Scott Harrison is not that hard to get access to. You just do, you just write a big check, and when I have the money for it, I'll just do that and I'll have lunch with him. But <laughs> Peter Thiel is very hard to get access to. He's the he's the author of the book Zero to One, and he's the founder of PayPal. He built it with Elon Musk and a bunch of other amazing people. So I'd love to have dinner with him since he's probably the hardest person I could get access to in my life. So every day you wake up, you're obviously very highly driven individual. What is it that you look forward to? What do you what do you like to see? done by the end of your day? By the end of my day is definitely a different answer than by the end of my life. So let's start with the day. I would say at the end of the day, I I just want to know that I did the best that I could. So there's never a day where, unless I, I do so many meetings in a row where I go, man, I had the most productive day. There's so many days I look and I just go, geez, I should have done much more. But I'll say at the end of my life, the most important piece is, did I democratize communication for the world? And if I was able to do that, then I consider that a job well done. And if not, well, at least I tried. So, you know, the other thing that's very key to us as humans is art. We learned that over COVID, whether it was TV, film, music, whatever it is, or, or books. What has it been for you? What what art have you always gone back to and, and, and it's been inspiring for you? I would say for me, the most inspiring piece of, of my life and my journey is really working on cool, innovative ideas. That's really what excites me. Like when I quit my corporate job, you know, I, I left a big salary behind. You. Like I probably cut my salary by 70% to do master talk. But I just asked myself a simple question. What would be more fun? Like what would be more exciting, more innovative? Because you can't buy back your time. That's what I think a lot of younger people don't realize is, yeah, sure, you could ha- you could make money, but you can't buy your 20s back. It doesn't matter how much money you got in the bank. So that's why, for me, what really gets me excited and what really lights my soul on fire is changing the world one step at a time and getting those results through uh, through communication, doing meaningful work. So clearly, you've had career changes. You've gone through a lot of change in your life. And I'm curious, if you have a dream tonight, you run into the younger version of yourself, say, in your 20s, and you could give that version of you a piece of advice based on the wisdom that you've gained over the years. What would you tell your younger self? For sure. I would say be insane or be the same. If you want to be like everyone else, that's totally fine. But we need to realize the people who do crazy things with their life are often crazy people. Don't you find it odd, Joe, that you're having a conversation with the guy who started a YouTube channel, not on pranks, not on music videos like other kids do these days, but on executive communication tips, and then he went on to coach those executives for money? Yet, he still lives in his mother's basement, is scared to drive a car, even if he bought it and has a license, can karaoke in eight different languages, and is in the top 1% of listeners on Spotify for Justin Bieber. How does any of this make any sense at all, Joe? And that, my friend, is the point when every decision in your life makes sense to the only person that it should, which is you, you're probably making the right decisions. So I would say be insane or be the same. I dig it. Yeah, yeah, good on you, man. So, you know, as somebody that is an expert on public speaking and and you teach this, what's the most common misperception? Because, you know, there's a lot of people out there where it's like, you know, if you coach them, you just, just, you know, you always say relax or whatever. But what is it ultimately? What advice? would you give that would be like, you know what, it's, this is the most common misperception of public speaking. Love that, Joe. Yeah, I would say the biggest thing is people focus too much on the granularity, like storytelling and body language versus what is the most important thing you should work on tomorrow. So that's why for me, the frame I've taken, Joe, is communication is like juggling 18 balls at the same time. And the goal is not to try and juggle all 18 right away, but rather figure out which ball to start with which in my opinion is going to be the random word exercise. Pick a random word like pillowcase, like suit, like light bulb, like screen, and create random presentations out of thin air. And that is the best way to get better for two reasons. One, because it helps you think quick on your feet. And the second reason is if you can make sense out of nonsense, you could make sense out of anything, And that's really the magic. So whether you're five years old, you're 25, you're 65 years old, do the random word exercise a few times a day. And if you just do that for a few months, 
you'll definitely have already done it hundreds and hundreds of times, and your confidence as a communicator will improve immediately. So everyone has this idea of who you are based on, you know, subscribing and, and clients, and they all feel like they know you in a certain way. But what would people be surprised to know about you that, that maybe they don't know, that would be a part of really who you are, but they wouldn't know up front? <laughs> I mean, besides the fact that I still live with my mother, but the, the, but you can ask me about why that is, it, and there's nothing to do with money. But the the other piece, but I, I think at this point a lot of people know that. I'd say the other piece people might not know is my favorite vacation is not Cancun, it's not going to Tokyo, it's not going to Morocco for a week, it's going to my cousin's basement in Toronto and eat fried chicken for two weeks. And which I'm looking forward to in December when when I take two weeks off for for once in my life when I take vacation. I, I live a very simple life. Like even if I've had success, and you know, hopefully I'll continue to do that. I think for me the biggest piece is understanding that it doesn't take a lot to be happy, and I think most of us overcomplicate things. So let's say this. Let's say we talk in five years from now. You know, I mean, the world's opened up. We're all going at a different pace now that COVID slowed down, and we've all kind of been woken up in certain ways. But let's say we talk in five years from now. What do you want to accomplish? What do you, where, where do you see things progressing for you? For sure, brother. So, so I'll give you the 50-year vision, then let's backtrack to five, and I'll tell it through a story. So I was watching a TikTok the other day, Joe, and it, it was about Taylor Swift, right, the famous musician that we all know. And she wins an award called Woman of the Year, which is a trophy that Billboard, the music company, gives out every year. And it's 2014. So she gets up on that stage. She looks at the audience and says, your future woman of the year is 11 years old right now. She's learning how to sing. She's in choir. She's playing piano. And we need to take care of her. And then what happens is six years go by. And Billie Eilish becomes the youngest inductee in Billboard's history to win Woman of the Year at the age of 17. So she gets up on that stage in her big bulky jacket, her big glasses. She looks at the stage and rambles throughout the whole thing. Oh, my God, I can't believe I won this. And she keeps rambling. And in the last 30 seconds, Joe, changes my life. She looks at the crowd and goes, oh, yeah, and I was watching Taylor Swift's presentation in 2014, and I was 11 years old. And I was learning how to sing. And I was in choir, and you all took care of me, so thank you. And then she walks off stage. And the reason I always get goosebumps when I share this story is because I think about the next Elon Musk. You know, when Elon was 13 years old, Joe, and he was in South Africa, nobody cared about him, nobody helped him, and his dad wasn't too nice to him either. Nobody sat him down and said, hey, you're going to be a big star someday. You should probably work on your communication skills. And I think about the next Elon Musk who's probably some seven-year-old girl in Cambodia who can't afford me. So for me, my ultimate vision is to become the next Dale Carnegie. And the reason that's so important is because if I could share my ideas, my knowledge on communication with the world, everyone would be able to share their ideas with the world, specifically the geniuses of our society. And if that happened, then the world would evolve at light speed. But the five-year version of that, I would say to close this out, is really around how to grow the coaching business a lot faster, grow the brand much faster, so that I can take my game to the next level to ultimately achieve that North Star. Everyone has a perception of you, your family, your friends, your clients, but ultimately you live your life. You have a perception of who you are. Who is it that you think you are? Who is it that I think I am? Ah, I, I really get a uh, blocked in questions. To, let me think about that. <laughs> who do I think I am? I think I'm, um, okay, I see where you're coming from. Like, who do I think I am versus how other people perceive me? Yeah. I would say the way that I perceive myself is purely simple. I'm pretty open about my life, as you can probably tell from this interview. But I would say the only nuance is I'm a lot more intense than I give the illusion of publicly. So, for example, if I'm on a podcast, I don't want to be too intense with people or else I'll alienate a lot of individuals. Whereas let's say I'm coaching like a top end CEO at some company, like I'm yelling most of the time, I'm swearing at them, I try my best not to swear on this podcast, right? So, so I'm a lot more vicious and, and a lot of people probably don't see that side of me that often, but I would say my close family does in general. That's interesting, very interesting. So if anybody wants to 
check out uh, your YouTube channel, learn more about you, get involved with your services, anything related to your world, Brendan, where do they go? Absolutely, Joe. First of all, it's such a pleasure to be on your show. I love the questions, and it was a great therapy session for me, so it's a good, lot of good <laughs> things for me to think of a as well. And I also appreciate your patience. For those that are listening to the podcast, I was 10 minutes late to this and Joe was super gracious with me. So, so I really appreciate it. So two ways to keep in touch, brother. The first one is the Master Talk YouTube channel. All you have to do is type Master Talk in one word and you'll have access to hundreds of YouTube videos on how to communicate ideas effectively. And the second way to keep in touch is my free training that I do on communication every few weeks. And if you want to register for that live interactive training over Zoom, just go to rockstarcommunicator.com. Thanks for tuning in to another famous interview with Joe Domino, where we cover the world of art, literature, podcasting, and music around the globe. If you want to hear more interviews, visit the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino channel on YouTube. Thanks again for listening, and until next time. Mm-hmm.